Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining uh, London AI Technology Meetup. So in this meetup, uh, we are going to look at uh, today reinforcement learning. Uh, so we are having a, uh, also a speaker, um, Mr. Alex also joining uh, for today's uh, meetup. So he'll be also sharing expertise on, uh, his, on startup and uh, reinforcement learning use cases. So we'll be doing an introduction first, uh, an introduction to reinforcement learning, and then getting into more in depth, uh, we are looking at more uh, use cases and practical approach on that. So uh, on behalf of uh, London AI uh, Technology Meetup, we are welcome everyone. Uh, so this is a monthly meetup we are having uh, with a lot of partners, startups and organization. So we have a lot of collaboration with every month. Uh, we are bringing speakers and other collaborators for our meetup. Uh, so uh, in today's meetup, we have 60 registrations. Uh, so we'll be sharing a meeting recording also after this event. Uh, so this is we are planning every month uh, to bring uh, new uh, uh, techniques, new technologies and tools on uh, AI technology, uh, especially within the uh, UK uh, and European uh, countries. Uh, so we are uh, every month we are bringing a lot of new uh, topics. So the today's topic is focused on reinforcement learning. Uh, so uh, with me, I have uh, Alex, uh, Mr. Alex, so he's also uh, from the second part of the uh, meetup, he'll be sharing his uh, experience on his startup and uh, the, the reinforcement learning toolkit and uh, some training. So he'll be uh, sharing uh, his knowledge on that uh, part. So first, uh, we can start with uh, the basic things uh, with the reinforcement learning. Right. Okay. Uh, so reinforcement learning is a, a different type of a learning technique compared to machine learning and deep learning. Where in the machine learning and deep learning, we know a lot of data is involved, where we need to depend heavily on data and we need to do cleaning of the data and then we need to prepare the data uh, and then only we can come to a conclusion. But in the reinforcement learning is also uh, mostly with the environment setup. So we are creating a, a virtual or dynamic environment uh, for uh, learning to set up. Uh, so it's mostly used in a lot of uh, simulation or realistic kind of a scenario. So you have seen in uh, examples like a self-driving car, things like that, or uh, a robotic arm, those kind of simulation environments where we can practice before actually uh, going into a real uh, device, we can do a training and we can train that particular agent or the particular device. Uh, so in, that, in this session, we are going to look at those areas. So here uh, we create a training technique that is self-learn on, on its own. What we are providing is an environment. So we are giving environment that agent to learn and we are giving rewards. If it is a good thing, we are giving a positive reward. If it is a bad thing, we are giving a negative reward, right? So that's why by learning itself, uh, this agent will get familiar with the techniques and then uh, apply that in a different scenario. Uh, it's more like a self-learning. You know, when you do self-learning on some topics, we learn and we know from our mistakes like that. So we create a, this kind of environment. Uh, within the environment, we give this kind of a rewards mechanism. So we give positive rewards and negative rewards. Uh, based on that, it trained, right? So in this, uh, you can see a typical scenario where we need to define an environment, we need to define a state, reward and action uh, to train an agent. So this agent can be trained on a certain scenario. Uh, but the main thing is we don't need to provide past data. You know, uh, in a lot of uh, machine learning, deep learning, where we need to provide a lot of uh, data, right? So it could be uh, like structured or unstructured. We need to provide a lot of data. But in this case, we don't need to provide data. We create an environment. We provide a state and a reward function. So based on the action that agent take, uh, there will be positive or negative kind of a reward. So if it is doing something according to our requirement, it will be a positive reward. Otherwise, it will be a negative reward. So based on that, it will learn or train. So, you know, every, uh, most of these uh, learning techniques have a training process, even machine learning, deep learning have its own training technique. So it do that training. So based on that training, it learned, and then it's kind of, finally we can create a model on that. But since there is no initial data points at the, to begin with, it takes more time than the uh, machine learning, deep learning. We are in the machine learning and deep learning, we have initial data set and we have sample data set. So we are, in this case, at the very first iteration of the training, there's no data at all. So it takes more time to do this training. So that is a kind of a take a lot of computation power. But the good thing is it's, it's, it's going to be prepared for more, more scenarios than the machine learning deep learning. Why? 
in those cases we are providing only the data set given data set so data set is predefined so the result is also coming within the given data set especially in machine learning is within the given boundaries of the data set but here the agent can explore new things new boundaries new areas they can explore based on the training techniques because we are not giving initial data set so that is a one of the key advantage that's why it's applied for things like robotics uh, things like self driving car and automated agent so there are a lot of use cases and it can even replace if you do not have data points if you do not have data sets that's also a really good technique we can use because uh, then also we can prepare this technique and we can use this uh, so here uh, you can see some of the four elements that we need we need to create a policy uh, reward uh, so it could be a positive or negative value function and the environment so we need to provide a particular environment uh, to this agent to train on so that's why uh, most of the time reinforcement learning used in a real world sim simulations and real world areas so that's why uh, the technologies like unity also adapting these areas so yeah we can easily create 3d simulation and 3d environments to adapt this so where we can easily uh, train and practice these things much more easily so i will uh, briefly explain those things also in the tool set so when you are setting up uh, this kind of agent uh, you need to have these four uh, kind of elements you need to set up uh, so the key thing is setting up the environment then you need to set up this reward and policies based on that the agent will learn right uh, it takes more time let's say we are using one x of time for machine learning this will take maybe three x four x of time to train because it doesn't have input data but the good thing is once it's learned it is more is performing better than the machine learning deep learning because it not depend on that input data set where yeah, it can learn it's like we learning on ourselves right than reading a book if you read a book uh, it's, you are limited by the content in the book but if you learn on yourself from the internet or likewise it's not it's purely open and you can learn a lot of things and you can even make mistakes as well that's a Thing. by mistake uh, you make a lot of new learnings but if you go for special instructions like in a book you don't make mistakes but you are bound by the information in the book uh, so that is the main difference uh, in the uh, traditional learning techniques to the reinforcement learning uh, so where you can see uh, environment is preparing an agent for certain actions and based on that it make observation and is giving rewards if it is a positive thing we will get a positive rewards if it's a negative thing it will get a negative reward so based on the actions that we take it will give a different kind of reward so based on that agent will prepare certain uh, boundaries on its own we know we are not giving any initial data sets on its own agent is preparing themselves uh, to uh, for these scenarios so that is the main advantage so we can use to these automated scenarios like robotics other simulations those agents we can use this directly because of the uh, this feature that we are having in the things for learning. Uh, so let's go into tools. So mainly there are two tools. OpenAI uh, is one of the main tool uh, that is uh, widely available uh, that uh, will be discussed by Mr. Alex more in detail uh, with a lot of practicals and demos. Uh, so I will just briefly go through uh, the OpenAI tool is uh, easy to use, uh, free open source tool. You can install into the Python uh, frameworks and the Anaconda environment. It is also having a predefined set of tools and a uh, set of frameworks uh, that is already there, uh, like predefined environments that we can use. And also we can uh, create custom environment. Let's say we have a custom scenario. We can use OpenAI uh, to create custom scenario as well. Then the other main tool uh, we have is Unity ML agent. That is by Unity. Uh, Unity is actually not uh, uh, initially, you know, Unity is not a ML tool. It's a game development engine, game development tool. So why the Unity is, Unity is mostly providing this 3D simulation, 3D environments for us to work with. Uh, Unity is really good with like mobile games, uh, those kind of different games, PC console. So where is going, providing us this simulation because in OpenAI, that simulation comes with the Python uh, based game frameworks. That's because Python is not really good with when it comes to games, uh, simulation. So that's why Unity addressed to that challenge where Unity is native to uh, simulation there are a lot of tools and techniques where we can uh, use to create a gaming like simulation environment where it have this ml engine agents where we can uh, train uh, reinforcement learning agents and we can use them also uh, so here you can see example in the open ai gym uh, so this is using open ai gym toolkit so we can train uh, this uh, 
uh, small vehicle to go into this pole. So likewise, so it learned on its own. So we are giving environment and a reward scenario and a positive and negative, uh, negative uh, level feedback. So based on that, it try to learn and try to get to reach to that particular level. So because of that, because we are not giving any initial data set, because of that, it takes more time. So in machine learning, let's say one X, it will take three X, four X time. So that's why we need more computation power, like cloud computing, we need a lot of computation power to achieve the result. Uh, so this is a one scenario. So you can go to the uh, official website and you can find a lot of uh, uh, the, uh, the predefined uh, environments that is given by uh, in this, you can uh, use this URL. So in this, you can see a uh, lot of predefined, uh, you, uh, the environments are given. Uh, this is for robotic arms, uh, box TD, right? Uh, gaming algorithms, robotics, right? Uh, like classic environments, things like that. So it is giving a lot of these uh, different uh, kind of scenarios uh, that uh, we can use it, right? Uh, so you can use this uh, and you can use these environments and then you can build on top of that. And uh, the other feature in that is we can even train custom uh, environments. Uh, so let's say we want to uh, create a stock market uh, trade uh, trading bot or agent uh, that automatically or dynamically change based on the changes of the other parameters. So we can do that. So we can create a custom environment, uh, gym environment for stock market trading based on the other parameters environment. So the good thing is we don't need to give past stock market data, right? We don't need to give, uh, like say FUSTI 100, we don't need to give the past 30 years of stock uh, records, like stock market data. So it's, we can give the environment and the condition and based on that, we can define uh, the uh, set of features, how we can move and how we can improve the, uh, the set of uh, this kind of a custom gym environment. So in that we can uh, create our own environment and we can create our own rules and the agent will prepare according to that. So first you need to uh, get familiar with the uh, basic predefined environment. Then we can come up with the custom environments like this. So next uh, Unity ML uh, environment. Uh, this is uh, uh, from Unity, as I mentioned, Unity is a game engine. Uh, so they are really good with 3D side, uh, but they have a uh, couple of years ago, they have gained to uh, the gaming side, the ML side where uh, they support using this Unity ML agent as a complete framework. They uh, connected to TensorFlow and other set of frameworks uh, to build these uh, capabilities into the machine learning, uh, then do the reinforcement learning, uh, where uh, we can train a certain scenario. And the best thing is uh, this, uh, you can see uh, when, you, when you come to graphics, uh, open AI, a lot of challenges, like uh, because you need to create everything in Python. Python is not a really good game development language. Uh, we can do, of course, really good games, but Unity is by default native game development language. So we can use Unity uh, to create simulation and then we can train ML agent from there. So here you can see uh, one example uh, crawler. So it's try to crawl into this. Uh, so we can give the environment, we can give a goal. So likewise, so there's a certain set of definitions they have put, but it's the same concept uh, in the reinforcement learning technique where we can follow up and we can uh, create a training agent. Uh, so uh, this is another scenario. You can go to GitHub and go to the official Unity repo and then you can find the sample project. Uh, so this is one example where uh, it's try to, uh, this is a vehicle uh, simulation, it's try to park uh, this uh, particular car into the correct location. So it's learned from this uh, reward function, uh, positive and negative feedback. It's take because of that, it will take a lot of uh, training uh, kind of approach, right? Uh, but once it's trained, we can easily use that model and we can replace it with other scenarios, right? So it takes a lot of time uh, to train this particular scenario. So we need to give the environment, we need to give uh, the uh, reward feedback and then the, uh, the, the, the certain set of functions uh, to uh, train this. So this will pass forward uh, since we have limited time. Right, so you can see attempt. So it's now uh, 200. Uh, like 20,000 attempts, right? So likewise, as I mentioned, it's taking a lot of training. So the training uh, number of iterations are quite high compared to machine learning iterations. But once it's uh, do the training, you can see now it's 30,000, it's closer to the uh, point, but it's not, uh, uh, it's much closer. Now close to 50,000, it's try to achieve uh, some level. So likewise, 100,000, you can see it's uh, achieved. So likewise, now it's preparing like different way, like coming from here, coming from the left side, coming from the right side, 
likewise how, how to uh, park the vehicle that coming from there so that agent is preparing uh, to do that in automated way using reinforcement learning it's a really good uh, kind of a use case that we can see in the unity because unity is really good with uh, 3d simulation and 3d environments that uh, we can easily use this uh, tool to uh, create uh, because these are like native in the unity environment right so you can go to this uh, github repo github.com unity technology slash ml agent and you can look at further uh, look at these tools and you can uh, play around this uh, unity tools okay uh, and if you have any questions you can ask so next uh, we'll move to our next part of the session uh, so we'll be uh, mr alex will be uh, sharing uh, about uh, the embra uh, the ai arena and uh, reinforcement learning use cases and also showing uh, some demos on uh, reinforcement learning and how we can use this agent so i will uh, hand over uh, to uh, mr alex perfect thank, thank you very much uh Udita, and let me try to share my screen yeah you can share now. Yeah. okay C can you confirm you are seeing what my my background here yeah i can see okay great perfect so uh, first of all hello everyone i'm really happy to be here today um presenting if you know what we built in the world of uh, rl and thank you Udita, for your introduction uh, i will uh, super quickly go through you know build upon what you already shared with us uh, in a more let's say practical uh, context so uh before uh, starting yeah this is what we're gonna uh, see today a few words about me also who i am what i do and then we will move to rl in practice a few you know minutes in definitions goal advanced techniques challenges and then uh, a few words about the Diambra project and and finally uh, the RL agent showcase. I'm going to show you how we trained um, an, a, re a reinforcement learning agent to play you know, effectively uh, Street Fighter 3, one of our games. So after that, a few words about the collaborations opportunity and at the end, the Q&A session uh, so yeah, let's get started. So about me, uh, super quickly, uh, this is my headline on LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to be connected with everyone interested in these domains. I'm an aerospace engineer, uh, also passionate about software and programming. I have been lucky enough to, you know, had the opportunity to merge these two fields together with the passion I have for the whole machine learning domain mainly uh, dealing with computer vision and uh, even more specifically with the reinforcement learning. You are seeing here two screenshots that are really uh, meaningful for me and it's uh, AlphaGo and OpenAI 5. These are two moments in the RL <clears throat> history that you know are milestones. They demonstrated the powerful capabilities reinforcement learning is able to provide. And so moved by these sparks, let's say, uh, I decided to build something around it. You know, I wanted to focus on, on RL and this is, you know, why, um, you know, I, I managed to create the Diambra project. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it uh, in a few slides, uh, but this is the path that the, my, my journey that uh, brought me here. So yeah, we were watching the reinforcement learning scheme. It's pretty standard. And uh, this is just contextualized in the Diambra framework. So we have an agent that is sending actions to an environment and he's receiving back an observation of the environment and a reward. Um, Diambra is uh, focused on video games and in particular in this moment in uh, fighting video games. And so, uh, it is very easy to understand uh, each element of this scheme. So the agent is, of course, the algorithm that receives observations and reward, where the observation is uh, the frame of the game. And the reward is how well is it playing the game. And for example, so it deals with the health bar, health values you have and your opponent has. Now, based on this items you select your your action that is of course in this case a button pressed in your gamepad this action is sent to the environment that reacts 
uh, react to, to these actions sent, received. So let's uh, watch uh, how it works in a code example. A very simple uh, starting code for reinforcement learning would look like this one. So we create the environment in this line here. So we are initializing our environment with a given uh, set of setting. Uh, for example, here we are prescribing, we are gonna use the other life plus plus. And uh, that's it. You initialize the environment. The next step, you reset your environment and it returns uh, the observation, the very starting one, you know, at the very, begin uh, you know the, the very early stages of your round that's the first observation after that you will start your loop of interaction and uh, so the agent selects the action uh, to send to the environment the action is sent and executed by the environment in the step method and in uh, the result is an observation returned by the environment, a reward returned by the environment, and finally you a done condition and uh, info that is you know it collects information about the execution that can be useful uh, for logging and debugging. But the three, three you know the first three are the main ones: observation, reward, and the done condition. Done condition is needed because in our case we are addressing what uh, are called episodic tasks it means that your agent will face episodes so from uh, um, you know problems that have a start and have an end typically when you're playing this kind of video games the start condition is at the beginning of the first round and the end condition is either uh, game completed or game over now uh, this is it and uh, you can start this interaction with your agent uh, with you and your environment and there will be this is the the default way to you know the behavior uh of course you in order to train your agent that in this configuration for example is acting randomly because we are sampling actions in a random way in order to train it you need to leverage the reward returned from the environment to uh make it learn how to select actions based on observation and we are gonna see how it works so in the case of the umbra the observation space is represented here in this specific uh example so we have of course the screen pixel has a, a human player has and a few additional numerical values uh, in fact we translated we extracted from the frame a few additional numerical values you can if you want, train your agent only on screen pixels. But if you want, you can also leverage these numerical values. They describe everything that is already available in the screen pixel. So there is not hidden data here. And uh, these numerical values are showing you on which side of the uh, ring you are, uh, which character are you using or are you facing um, health values, these kind of things. So standard um, elements you usually use when, play, when playing these games. Uh, the action space is represented here. As I said, is of course um, uh, the set of buttons you can press in your gamepad. Now, depending on, on the settings, you can you know, have a, a slightly different uh, action space that is the entire set of actions you can send to the environment because for example you can select discrete action space or multi-discrete action space for the umbra arena now discrete action space means that you will need to select either a move uh, action or a, a, a attack action so either one or the other and you cannot send the two at the very same time and while the multi-discrete action space allows you to send at the same time a move and an attack action. So this, of course, uh, uh, you know, reflects in the, the size of the action space. Because if you have just uh, a move or an attack action, you have a smaller action space with respect to you know, uh, when you have both uh, the possibility to send both actions, you know, move and attack at the same time. Now, uh, 
Uh, apart from this, uh, let's Uh, yeah, you did that, I suppose, uh, cannot hear. Uh, we cannot hear you, Alex. Okay, what about okay. now? Okay, now. Okay, fine. perfect. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, moving forward, what's the goal of, of the reinforcement learning? Well, the goal is finding the optimal policy. So something that starting from our observation of the problem is able to tell us which action to select uh, in order to achieve the maximum, uh, you know, to optimize our reward. What is our reward? Um, this is the goal. Now, um, the what is you can see here is one of the major you know stepping stones of uh, reinforcement learning is the first uh, successful attempt of merging deep learning with reinforcement learning giving you know birth of the so-called field of deep reinforcement learning well here we are seeing uh, a deep neural network that is used to select actions based on observation he receives. Uh, in particular, it's like it, it is selecting actions uh, to play games depending on the screen pixels that are provided as input. So it is pretty shallow. It's not such a big network. It is composed by three convolutional layers and two fully connected ones. And that's it. Uh, what's make the difference is how it is trained. Now, this is a the typical setting of deep reinforcement learning. There are, you know, one of the uh, best um, algorithms to train um, deep reinforcement learning model is called uh, proximal policy optimization. And uh, we are seeing here on screen the architecture of the network that I'm going to show you in a while that will control uh, the player of Street Fighter 3. It's a deep neural net that is, you know, made of two uh, feature extractor. The first one at the top is extracting features from the frames. And the, the second one at the bottom is extracting features from the numerical additional information. They, then these two features, these two sets of features are, are being concatenated and provided as input to a final fully connected neural net. Th that is the one that will select the best actions for you know, that condition, that specific condition. Moving uh, again to, you know, on, and uh, there are a few, a few very interesting uh, advanced techniques in the world of reinforcement learning. One of them is called imitation learning. This is you know, a specific features that allow you, a specific feature that allows you to um, uh, train an agent, uh, you know, to replicate uh, a human expert behavior, okay? And so for, for this reason, it is called imitation because someone is providing examples of good behavior and... Uh, Uh, Alexa, again, you cannot hear. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because I'm I'm just muting who's who's uh, oh, okay. logging in. Uh, so uh, probably it messes up with my own. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, imitation learning is if applied in a specific way, uh, also you know takes the the, the name of uh, behavioral cloning because you are trying to clone the behavior of an expert. So, yeah, this is one of the advanced technique. Um, the next one is called self-play. And the idea here is uh, in order to train an agent, you don't, you know, let it play against, I don't know, a scripted bot or against uh, the computer itself, but you try to make it fight or, you know, play against itself. In this way, a good thing is, an additional good thing is, he, he will be facing uh, every time 
uh, an opponent of the of almost the same skill level and he will grow uh, organically in this sense so self play is definitely another cool technique and also human in the loop training is uh, is a very um, you know important and advanced technique um, in order to give you the idea of what is like uh, let me just play a very easily a quick video I have here. So here the goal is training a, a hopper to jump. And uh, instead of uh, coding of uh, the specific reward function, here we are just, as human, we are just selecting which one of these alternatives is better. At the very early stages, it's not super clear, but you, you still have to pick one. Uh, but as you can see, as the time goes on, it, it, it becomes even more clear. And so at the end, uh, just selecting which one looks you know, uh, more performant, we are able to obtain a good result. Now, the thing here is that sometimes it's not easy to code a reward function to use for our environments. And it's way better to use our human you know, power in terms of intuition and abstraction capabilities to uh, give a feedback to our agent. So this is where human in the loop takes place now. And this is a very, a very simple example. Let's move on. And yeah, a few words about challenges of RL. Of course, theory uh, is a complex field. And especially when deep learning comes uh, together, uh, no, they merge. Uh, so it can become uh, very complex. So definitely that, that's one of the problem. Uh, the other one that Udith already mentioned, it is, it is called sample complexity. And this is you know, the amount of computational power you need to solve these problems. And uh, as you can see here, these are numbers uh, for OpenAI 5. In order to train their bot, they needed, they used 128,000 CPUs and tw uh, 256 GPUs together. So they collected experience uh, uh, in, in these numbers are like ridiculous, like 180 years per day per agent. Uh, of a total of 900 years per day uh, if you count the five heroes together. You know. So as you can imagine, every day those agents are, you know, they were seeing like nine, nine, 900 years of experience in a day. So this gives you the idea of what is a sample complexity in these domains. And this is the infrastructure they used, as I said, those number you have here a unit uh, with a single GPU, and for that rollout, so experience is collected by uh, 500 CPUs, and this is multiplied by 20, uh, sorry, 256. So you have 256 of these units uh, in the third dimension here, and then a few more, like 2,500 CPUs are used for to, to you know to evaluate your workers, uh, your 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 agents to get a feeling of how training is going. So this should give you the the idea of the sample complexity. And this is also why we need virtual environments because you want to parallelize this experience collection, and so you want to use virtual environments even for real world tasks uh, that you replicate in simulation. So this is uh, the reason and the main, uh, you know, at the same time, limitation as well as an opportunity for, for a real world. Super quick, uh, industry applications, of course, the uh, vi uh, video game world is the main one because, you know, for video games, the virtual and the real world environments, they are the same because you deploy your models to you know, be, be used in virtual worlds that are video games. And so the, the famous uh, transfer learning, transfer to the real world is uh, way, way easier. Uh, but they can be used also for stock market, as Odita already mentioned. Uh, they can be used to optimize advertising platforms. They can even be used to uh, create robust 
control for vehicles in this case is uh, you can see here a small multi-rotor drone but i can tell you you know uh even in space uh, we are studying them so uh reinforcement learning is for sure something that is still behind fields like computer vision in terms of maturity and adoption in industry but it is going to be uh, of paramount importance in the future now again to complete what uh, Udit already shared with you, a few results that you may find useful. Let's start with environments. Uh, two already mentioned, the OpenAI Gym and uh, Unity ML agents. Yes, because if you want to, to, and I strongly suggest you to, to study RL, you need something to work on in order to have a practical uh, feeling. And so you need to have environments. So together with them, at the center, you see our own environment that is called the Umbra Arena. I will show it you uh, pretty in a few minutes. And uh, this is a good alternative, and I will tell you why uh, soon. Then, after that, how to train a model? Well, in, you can definitely code your own algorithm, but you can also find useful to leverage already available libraries. And these three are the main ones. Uh, stable baselines, uh, Ray, RL, Lib, RL Coach. The first two, so stable baselines is the one that I use to train my own agents. Ray is uh, the reference for distributed reinforcement learning. It's a very, very, um, you know, uh, powerful. RL Coach, I don't have experience, but I know it's also an alternative. Then, books and courses. Well, on the left, two books. The first one is uh, the main reference for reinforcement learning worldwide, reinforcement learning and introduction by Sutton and Barto is where to start for sure. Right after it, you know, uh, an option, uh, the reinforcement learning workshop, I co-authored uh, it three chapters uh, there, and it gives you a very hands-on uh, idea of a RHEL with uh, examples and uh, um, an associated GitHub repository. Then courses, lectures, uh, Deep RL Bootcamp from Berkeley. Uh, it's great. Uh, all these three, all the first three I have experience. I, I follow all, all of them. They are super good. The, the final one on the right, it's a set of reinforcement learning lectures by DeepMind. Well, while Berkeley Bootcamp is mainly focused on deep reinforcement learning, um, uh, DeepMind and uh, UCL reinforcement learning uh, lectures are more, you know, high level, uh, covering the entire reinforcement learning world, not only deep RL. Very good resources. And then, of course, you need to go to papers because that's it. You know, this field even more, if compared with uh, computer vision is growing and so you need to be to keep the pace or of the academic progress and you need papers from you know open access like archive conferences and journals yeah that's another important uh, step and finally a suggestion if you haven't i strongly invite you to watch AlphaGo the movie you find it for free available on youtube on the deepmind channel it's great. It's just great. It, it gives you uh, insights about this world together with the complex, you know, uh, dualism with, you know, AI versus humans and these haptic aspects. So uh, it's a very suggested watch, this one. Okay. Now, Diambra, let's, uh, you know, dive into it. Uh, as I said, this is a project. Uh, I created a few you know, months, actually it has been uh, slightly more than a year ago. Um, you can think about the Umbra has composed by three main components. The first one is the reinforcement learning environments package. And I already told you it's uh, the Umbra arena is great for starters as well as for experts. Uh, then there is the RL community. We do have our own Discord server. We have our Twitch channel where we stream uh, coding sessions, gaming sessions, uh, and finally the AI tournament platform. This is something that we are building. We are, we are building a web app application where you will be able to submit your agents 
your reinforcement learning agents trained to you know achieve uh, specific challenges to fight against against other users to take part in tournaments with money prizes we already had one last year so this is it you know this is the entire uh, span of the umbra uh, references the main one is our website theumbra.ai you can go there at the very top on the right you will find a direct link to all our main resources the first one is our github repository because our environment is available on GitHub, publicly available, free, free of course, 100%. It has a very good and clear documentation. You can use it. It also provides examples to run very easily. It supports every major OS. You can use it on Linux. You can use it on Windows and Mac OS. So, you know, you can easily reach that from our website. And then our Discord server that is very useful to receive support for the Umbra as well as to get in touch with the community that we are building and our Twitch channel and all other channels we have. Finally, the Umbra Arena uh, main features and why you should think about using it. Well, first of all, it provides cool environments. We have like six already interfaces, six fighting games. Um, they are Dead or Alive, Plus Plus, Street Fighter 3, Tekken Tag Tournament, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, um, The King of Fighter 98, and Samurai Showdown 5. Um, we are gonna, we are already working to bring more, and uh, we will expand to you know other games, not only fighting games, and we will reach you know uh, also the milestone of providing modern games. Everything, you know, needs time, but we're going to get there. And, uh, you know, so keep an eye on that. Cool environments, tractable dimensionality. As I said, uh, it can be hard to train these agents. You can, but with these ones, you can train them at home. Uh, direct support available through Discord. It's maintained and well-documented. All those, um, you know, OS and advanced features because you can use self-play, you can use human in the loop training and so on and so forth. Now let's go to the uh, coolest part. Let's see our training agent. So what you're gonna see is something that has a policy that brings as input, you know, it takes as input frames and additional information and selects actions to send to the environment. And this is how it is built. I already told you that. And this is how, how it works internally. Now, I can share this later, but you know there are three convolutional filters uh, inside the, the convolutional part, uh, 64 hidden uh, uh, nodes, hidden neurons on, on the fully connected at the bottom. And that's it, more or less. These are the uh, sizes. I can share this. You, know, you will have this recording available after the event, so you can take a look. Um, but you know, apart from that, there's nothing more to see. Uh, I've been able to train it in a single workstation, so not the that enormous uh, you know infrastructure that uh, OpenAI used. And this is uh, also the other part, good part of uh, uh, you know the Amber Arena. And yeah, so collaboration later. Let me go and execute the environment. So first of all, I can show you a random agent. Let's start from that. So, so you can get a feeling of what's the difference between a random agent and a trained agent. Uh, I will stop it because it could take a while to execute three uh, you know, episodes of a random agent and I will then start the trained one. Now, uh, let me be clear. Okay, the random agent, it may, uh, since it's uh, playing in a good way because you will see it will be able even to win some rounds maybe, but keep an eye on the score. This score here is the so-called total cumulative reward. So the reward we are collecting uh, as the episode goes on. Let me just go down with the sound for uh, the main. Okay. Now I will enlarge this window. Okay. So we are about to start. This is the random agent, guys. Now, as you will see, he will start spamming moves all around uh, without 
uh, a super, you know, uh, clear, uh, clever choices. But as you can see, it is able to hit the opponent. And this depends also on the difficulty level of the game, also on the opponent. Some of them are, are, are weaker than others. But still, uh, the, as you will see, there, there is a big difference in terms of reward if compared with the trained one. Um, now, I, I trained this agent to play with Ryu, okay, the one on the on the left, the one with the white kimono, and this is of course one of the things that, that you need to take a look at when training, you know, choices to make. Uh, how general you want your agent to be? Do you want it to use all the, uh, you know, all the characters, or you do you want it to use just one? You know, all these things are choices you have to make. Now, I am gonna stop it because uh, it's not more than this you have watched it okay we lost the first round uh we have a total cumulative reward that is so far is minus 0 0.3 okay so it is easy easier you know to see the difference if i run the trained one but i wanted to to give you the idea of what a random agent looks like also because a random agent is something that you usually use to um, compare if you are learning something, you know, you, you need to uh, understand. So the random agent has this performance. Uh, let's see after a while. Okay, we lost it. Okay, let the total cumulative reward is minus 1.39. Let's keep that in mind. Minus 1.39. Let me run now the, the trained agent. Now, <clears throat> uh, so uh, this reward of course we need to take you know the average after a bunch of episodes because this is what is meaningful but once you have the average performance of the random agent you can compare it with a trained one and this is where it uh, comes you know the the use uh, usefulness of this uh, let's see if everything goes as ex expected it should it is starting now as you can see it takes a while because it's loading up some you know the network weights um of the of the policy network and uh, after that you will see it will freeze at the very early beginning of the round because it will be uh, loading networks uh, but after that it will it will be able to play in uh, almost real time actually in real time um yeah so it's loading up as again we will be using uh, real for for this and uh, let's see how it goes now usually this is pretty good um i cannot promise anything but usually it is pretty good okay remember keep in mind the first re uh, total community reward was minus 1.39 i will comment a little bit on on the first uh, round maybe or the first stage and then you see it freezed a little bit now it will be uh, playing uh, pretty soon okay now it started and you can see it's already um, you know showing a different behavior it's more aggressive and so far we were able to you know okay the first one is a perfect you see the total cumulative reward for a perfect it's gonna be two. Now it will update the score because the, the reward has been normalized so two at the first step is uh, sorry the first round and we are moving on uh let's see how it goes uh, i'm not sure we are gonna be able to have two perfects and that's the case in fact but still after the first stage we are about three points more than 3.75 moving to the second stage okay now um there are 10 stages uh up to the end but you know in the meantime we can i think start taking questions if there are from the audience otherwise we can definitely continue watching this and while you prepare to submit many let's say any question you may have through the chat i can also tell you that to anticipate that slide that you briefly uh, saw uh, before uh, of course, you know, as I already told you, I'm more than happy to connect with everyone that is interested in this kind of techniques. I mean, the, the technologies, tools. And uh, so please don't, don't hesitate to, to uh, ask for the connection on LinkedIn, join our Discord server. And if you want, of course, there are uh, opportunities for collaborations. We are building this project uh, with the effort of uh, many you know, uh, people uh, that are passionate about this stuff. There are opportunities in uh, around RL, around 
um, you know, web technologies around the video games. There are opportunities around everything, more or less. Uh, so feel free to reach out. You know. uh, so Udita, whenever you want, if you have uh, questions, uh, we can start addressing them because I think we are at the third stage and it's going to take a while <laughs> before it ends. Yeah. I believe yeah. it is uh, highly probable we can reach the final stage. So not sure, but it could be. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit long. But if you want, you know, you, we can start addressing questions. So talk about, about something you may you want to share. So yeah. uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, post in the chat box or you can uh, unmute yourself and you can ask. Uh, that's a, uh, not a question like a feedback was given uh, uh, in the chat. Uh, can take a look at it. Uh, Okay, okay. Cool. Thank I, I took a note for it. There's a question uh, from Gordon. Uh, how try these techniques on the go game? Okay. Thank you. First of all, thank you for uh, for the uh, for the question. No, actually, we have been uh, uh, focusing on fighting in fighting games for now. Uh, actually, I must say, I'm not. Uh, I never played Go, so I, I don't even know the rules, for example. Uh, uh, but and, and also, uh, it's uh, hard to you know do something. Uh, um, I wouldn't say better, but that compares with what DeepMind did. Uh, their, their papers, their um, uh, dissemination about what they did in Go was uh, great, amazing. And so I prefer, we prefer to, you know, focus on uh, maybe different problems, uh, different environments, and uh, that's that's our our main focus. Yes. Yeah, and t thank you, Ken. I agree with you. I, and I should say that uh, you, you're saying it looked like it looks like a, a little bit like the OpenAI bot beating Dota 2 champions. Uh, and uh, the, uh, I should, you know, being honest, uh, watching OpenAI achieving that milestone, what was you know the um, the spark that uh, made me decide to start. The Umbra, the, the Umbra project itself, because it was, uh, an, you know, an experience for me uh, seeing su such a great, um, you know, uh, algorithm grow, learn to beat human players. Of course, we are far from that. Uh, what you are seeing uh, right now in the screen is uh, an agent that is able to beat, um, to beat. Uh, the game, you know, the computer, not a human player. I can tell you that a, a good human player should be a, a able to easily beat uh, this trained agent. But still, it's it's way, you know, at this stage is better than me in playing against the computer. And so it's definitely um, at least, uh, you know, that demonstrates uh, these environments can be learned and uh, there is room for experimentation and research around this. Yeah. Uh, Keno, uh, uh, you, you said uh, you are asking, did you see the movie? I'm not sure if you're referring to AlphaGo, because in that case, yes, I did. And uh, I also suggested it, uh, you know, before. It has a good, a good uh, film to view if you're interested in, uh, in the RL domain. It's definitely very interesting, yeah. Yeah, I have a question uh, for you, Alex. Uh, so you mentioned about yeah. uh, deep uh, RL, which is a, a new technique. Uh, so what are the other techniques that uh, you think will be uh, coming on in terms of research or in terms of development, uh, more advancements that you think? Well, um, first of all, let, let's say the deep RL is uh, something that is merging uh, deep learning with reinforcement learning, and it comes from the need of addressing uh, um, addressing 
very complex problems because with standard techniques that are what we call finite or tabular problems, so problems that have a, a very small space in terms of both uh, observation and actions. Uh, so it is needed to have uh, something that is able to generalize to approximate uh, things and uh, so the idea to you know of relying in uh, in uh, neural nets and deep neural nets uh, came from to you know to solve that problem and it is right now the state of the art I mean it's uh, what is showing the best uh, the best uh, um, performances the, everything is is uh, still ba uh, based on the fundamentals that are you know there are three main techniques uh, solution methods for reinforcement learning problems they are uh, dynamic programming that uh, assumes you have a model of uh, the environment then there is uh, monte carlo uh, and methods and temporal difference so everything uh, is based on these two and especially temporal difference and uh, you know they are the basic of uh, of uh, approaching rl and at the moment there is nothing that seems to be uh, better suited at this stage uh, than deep reinforcement learning so it, it is uh, you know probable that it will be uh, where the future lies in terms of research, definitely. Okay, uh, there's uh, two questions in the chat uh, from Gordon. Okay. okay, so let me take a look at it. So uh, Gordon says, some 30 years ago, I asked a grad student to explore the stock market and get me a strategy that would be rewarding. The student did not get very far because in part, the capacity of computers were uh, nowhere near what they are today. Totally agree with you, of course. And uh, this is definitely, opening uh, a new um, you know, approach for that market. I totally agree with you. Uh, in fact, I, I can confirm there are already interest, mm -hmm. showed interest in, the, in this, you know, to uh, at least uh, try to, to beat standard uh, automated trading uh, solutions. So, uh, by the way, we are at the uh, second last stage. Can is the second last, so it's the ninth stage out of 10. We'll see how it goes if we are able to complete. Um, now, Keno is uh, is writing. First of all, is writing. Uh, he suggested artificial gamer. And could you maybe elaborate a little bit more on that? You know, um, what is it? What you wanted to point out with that? And also with Aladdin. Um, about uh, Gary's, with neural networks, we all know what a model looks like, and there are standard ways of storing those. In this world, are there also standard ways of doing that, or are they quite custom for each use case? Okay, this is also another good point. Um, the point is, at the moment, uh, as I said, uh, neural nets are a very performant solution that is able to uh, generalize and uh, reduce the oh god super move to, to reduce the you know the problem of high dimensionality to handle that, that dimensionality properly now uh, of course there can be other options and uh, um, you know maybe changing this approach and merging other technologies can be the case it's just that up to this point uh, this has been proven to be stable and to provide um, and to provide good uh, solutions, you know, to also performances and so stable because it's not so easy to make these uh, algorithms, you know, behave in a stable way. We are at the, at the final stage in the meanwhile. So thank you for for the clarification, Keno, uh, about Aladdin. And uh, yeah, I think there are a few frameworks there to predict, uh, to, to create a good trading bots. Yeah, thank you for sharing anyway. Um, so. Gil is a very complex uh, opponent to face, and also because he has a super move that is called resurrection. When you beat him and it has the, the full super uh, bar at the bottom, uh, he uh, is able to recharge entirely his, oh, but this is not the case, entirely the health. And so this is kind of like of you know, fighting against him twice in the same round. Um, Let's see if we're able to complete the game. So we need a new round and, you know, an additional round. Uh, and that would be it, but is looking 
uh, su su super complex this time. And you take a look at the super move by uh, Gil because uh, that's it, but we interrupted it. Uh, not sure if that's a good move because with the super at the end, it will uh, call the resurrection. Let's see if we are able to interrupt it maybe later. You see how uh, Ryu starts behaving in a different way now. You see that, you know, we are waiting for it. Okay, let's take a look at the res resurrection, but uh, oh no, we were not able to interrupt it. So we are against, again, against Gil with the super uh, bar full. It's, this is the complexity of this final boss, but we are not, you know, doing bad so far. Look how conservatives uh, is uh, become, um, you know, real, uh, you know, less aggressive, more protection, but, you know, again, it's complex. It's super complex to face this one. Oh, yes. Okay, guys, th that's always cool. And take a look at the total cumulative reward, 27.59, and compare it with the previous one. So it's pretty clear we were able to, you know, obtain a train agent that is able to obtain um, to obtain the a good cumulative reward if compared with the random one, but also in uh, absolute terms. Yeah, so that's, that's it for the showcase. Let me just uh, close this one. And yeah, I believe uh, that is more or less it. Um, I don't know. These are uh, our main references if you want. And uh, yeah. Uh, open for additional question if there are. Otherwise, uh, that's all, all from my side. Yeah. Uh, so if you have any more questions uh, from uh, uh, from the, the earlier session or this session, then you can uh, go there. So we can uh, take a look at it. Uh, so this is our contact details uh, that you can uh, reach out. Uh, and uh, regarding the next meetup, we are looking at uh, uh, another the. Uh, set of uh, speakers uh, for next meetup uh, and we are looking at uh, federated learning uh, is a key uh, area in that meetup and also uh, cloud ML technologies so this is uh, like uh, every month uh, keep to uh, follow up uh, our meetup uh, group London AI technology meetup so we planning to bring really valuable meetup for you and also uh, since we are recording the session you'll be able to get the uh, record of the meetup as well uh, so if you have any more questions uh, we can uh, ask uh, uh, if you have, can have uh, like maybe one or two minutes. So otherwise uh, we can uh, wrap up the sessions for today and thank you all uh, for joining today's meetup. So we have total 60 registrations. Uh, so we'll be sharing this recording for all the registrations as well. So you can uh, take a look at it. And I would like to thank uh, Mr. Alex also for joining and uh, sharing his knowledge and expertise. Of course, thank you, Dita. It was a pleasure for me. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And looking forward to see you again in the coming meetups as well. Uh, yeah. Okay, of course. so yeah, thank you, everyone. Then uh, uh, we will uh, see you again uh, in the next meetup.